Hello everybody, welcome to another video of .NET Plus, your full stack amigo here. Today, we are going to talk about how to store a reference to a variable and how to return a value by reference. We have already talked about how to pass a value by reference in the previous video. We used out, in and ref keywords and we talked about when and why we need to use pass by reference. So if you haven't seen that video yet, I put the link in the description below. So make sure to check it out. Okay, let's start with creating an array of numbers. And we assign a series of numbers to this, like 10, 20, and 30. Let's get the second element and put it inside the variable. Now let's change the value inside second. You put a breakpoint here and run the application. As you can see, the value of the second variable has changed to 50. But the value inside the array is still 20. This only happened because we are getting a copy of the second element here and we are storing it in a variable. So whatever happens to this is not going to be reflected on this element. But what if we want this to happen? Well, we need a reference to that location of memory which holds this variable. If we want this to happen, we need the address to the location of memory which holds this value. After that, if we change the value, it will be reflected here inside the array so let's check it out in order to get the location of memory which holds this element we have to put a ref keyword behind this assignment and since this is now a reference not a value we must add a reference beside this now let's run the application again to see what happens as you can see, the second has changed to 50 and the value inside the second element also has changed to 50. We call this a ref local because it is a reference local variable. What if instead of integers, which are value types, we had a string? Let's say we have 10, we have 20, and 30. Now let's challenge your minds. We change this integer to a string. Now let's declare a new variable and we call this temp and assign the second element to this. So we are working with reference types and we are getting a reference to that location of memory which holds 20 and now we want to change the value to something else like 50 so again temp was a reference to the location of memory which holds the value of 20 now let's run the application and see what happens as you can see temp has changed to 50 but the value inside the array has not changed. So why is that? This is because we have a reference to the location of memory which holds 20. But what we needed was a location of memory which holds this reference to this location of memory. When we were using value types such as integer, the value inside the array was the actual value. But when we are using reference types, the value inside the array is not the actual value, but a reference to it. So if we want to change that reference to that value, we have to get a reference to that reference which is inside the array. So now we need a reference to the second element of this array. And in order to do that, we use this syntax. So now, if I change the value inside the second variable 
I can see that the value inside the array has also changed. It was a little bit tricky, but I hope you have understood it. So, let's do more. Now, let's create a method which returns a string. Its name is fine and it is going to find a value inside an array of strings. Let's create a for loop and loop over the values. If we find the value which is equals to key, we will return it. And if we didn't find it, we return null. But what if we want to return the reference to that element? If we want to do that, we have to add a ref before or return type. And we also have to put a ref here in our return statement. But now we are getting errors here. In these kind of methods, we cannot return what is not a reference. So we remove this line and we throw an exception. Now, just like declaring this variable, if we want to call these kind of methods, we have to do the same. We put a ref before our variable and we put a ref before calling our method. Let's pass the numbers array and we want to find whether 30 is inside or not. Let's remove this line and run the application again. As you can see, the value of second has changed to 50 and the value inside the array also has changed to 50. A thing that I want to mention is that you cannot use ref everywhere you want. The ref keyword only works with assignable variables, fields and arrays. So for example, if this was a list of strings, We could not use the ref keyword to get a value from this. And the error says the same thing. We can only use ref with assignable variable, field, or array element. Okay, I hope you have enjoyed this video. So make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to leave a comment below. Until next time. Adiós amigos.